lopsided. <sighs> Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to the September Mix the YouTube channel. I was going to say podcast, but today isn't a podcast. So recently I've noticed that I have too much yarn. <laughs> this is really what sparked the whole video. Uh, I have too much yarn and I've decided to take a break from buying any yarn for at least six months. So let me explain a little why I've come to this conclusion. So if you're new here, my name is Claire, I'm a student, I study psychology and I live in the French-speaking part of Switzerland. Today we're sitting together and just knitting. I encourage you to take your knitting. I'm currently finishing up my Terrazzo neck by Petite Knit. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to knit while I chat about the different reasons um, why I'm not going to purchase any yarn for at least six months and preferably a year. I don't know if I can make it to a year, but I mean, we'll try and I'll keep you updated. So, um, for a little bit of backstory, I've never been too much of a shopper. I guess I've had like periods of time when I would be more inclined to buying a lot of stuff. and But then like it always followed with months on end, just like not buying anything. And I've always been quite interested in personal finance, even as a child, just like saving money. It, kind of became a little bit of a game to me uh, but yeah that all kind of changed when I became interested in knitting because well yarn can be expensive and even though I'm a student and I don't have like a big budget to spend on it I would still end up buying quite a lot of it. As a little disclaimer I know this is a problem of like very privileged people um, people who have to worry about like having too much of one stuff, uh, we can just really draw links to minimalism. Um, the whole minimalism is for privileged people. Uh, thought that well, if you will get rid of stuff, it's really because you don't, you're not afraid that you're going to run out, and you're not afraid that you're going to be in a position of lacking something. Um, and I guess that people from less privileged backgrounds than me uh, would be absolutely thrilled to have all the yarn that I have and I mean to be perfectly honest I am really happy with it like I think it's still interesting and I wanted to uh, bring um, a few points forward and just talk about um, like a kind of a strategy that I want to put in place for my future in like yarn purchasing and knitting. So the first thing I've noticed is <laughs> that yarn, the yarn that I have um, accumulated for the past few years, it has just become become really overwhelming. So recently I was just beginning to be a little bit fed up with the whole yarn being everywhere in my house <laughs> thing so I decided to just like take every ball of yarn that I have and just put it all on my bed and I the very least I can say is that I was shocked uh, with how much uh, yarn I had I it sounds stupid because I'm the one who bought all of this but I did not realize how much I had really so I decided to just put it in boxes in my um, wardrobe, which is just here, and keep a little bit of it out, which is here. I just thought it was in the spirit <laughs> of the, the video to put it just right here. This is my kind of yarn stash that I want to knit through uh, during this autumn. Uh, so yeah, I just had too much and I realized that it was becoming overwhelming which is strange because well it's just yarn is supposed to be 
make you enthusiastic to knit things. I know that a lot of people say that having a big yarn stash uh, makes them more creative and makes them want to just like knit all the things, <laughs> which it definitely does to a certain extent for me. Like having this much yarn just really inspires me. I see the colors, when I wake up in the morning, I can just like glance at all the different skeins and I'm like, whoa, well, when I'm done with this or that project, I'm going to be able to cast a new one. Not that I've been especially reasonable with how many projects on the go <laughs> I have. Well, not on the go, but like works in project, works in progress. I have, um, I've been casting on like crazy. Um, but yeah, it just really inspires me. The thing is, I have way too much yarn and it just, it's not inspiring to me anymore. I've had to put it all in boxes uh, simply because having it just out in my room was just making me almost stressed because it's like a constant little to-do list uh, of things you have to do. And well, for me, knitting is supposed to be relaxing. It's supposed to be like helping my mental health and not making me more stressed. So really, having this amount of yarn has made me too overwhelmed. I have too much choice. It's really comparable for me to when you go to a store and there's just like 40 different kinds of yogurt, milk, uh, I don't know, like chocolate, <laughs> for example. And you just cannot seem to make a choice. And even though I'm not an indecisive person, it started for me, uh, it started beginning to be, that's not the right word to phrase, the right way to phrase this sentence, <laughs> bear with me, English isn't my mother tongue, so yeah, sometimes I struggle a little bit, um, but yeah, it just, it was too much choice for me at all times, I could just like make anything, but at, at the very same time I could make nothing because I didn't have I didn't purchase the yarn with intentionality um sometimes I did uh but definitely sometimes uh not and I have balls and balls and balls of yarn without any project in mind so yeah just a little bit too overwhelming and I don't know if you've heard about the concept of stash above life expectancy but speaking for myself, some people might love it and I'm absolutely not judging them for it. But for me, it just feels like it doesn't fit in my life. It just stresses me out too much. And yeah, I just don't really like it. The second point that kind of resonates with it is <laughs> that I forget what I have. So a few times it has happened to me to just like buy yarn. And then to be like, oh, wait, I actually had something quite similar. Maybe not in the same color, maybe not in the exact weight, but just like seeing yarn online or in a podcast and be like, wow, I need that. And then I actually already have quite a lot at home. So <laughs> might sound stupid. Um, and I guess my stash isn't like as big as some other people stash could be but I just started forgetting what I already had and I, I thought for me it was a bit ridiculous um, to have that much and to just like forget. I guess I could also have an inventory online like on Ravelry or a Notion page or something but um, that would require effort on my part and <laughs> I'm not very motivated to um, write everything down right now. Maybe I will in the future, but right now my Ravelry just, is just a big mess uh, that I need to so sort out eventually, but it's really not on the priority uh, list, I guess. So, yeah. Next thing I wanted to talk about is the whole social media thing. Um, for me, I've always experienced the knitting community and fiber arts community as a very supportive, positive and beautiful co community overall. I swear I do not see any negativity. Maybe <laughs> I will begin to see some as like my channel grows a little bit, but for now I've all only had like positive feedback and 
I just love interacting with people and even on other creators' videos. All I see is positivity, which is amazing. Uh, but social media also comes with its fear of a bit, well, negative things, I guess. And for me, it's really about mostly Instagram. I feel like Instagram is a lot more fast-paced than YouTube, um, even though knitting podcasts, if you follow a lot of people, there's a lot of new things being showed. But it's a constant, constant feed of always having new projects, new patterns coming out, new kinds of yarns, new brands, um, new everything. And it's just very, even though nobody's telling you to knit all the things, knit every new project there is, um, it's still seeing over and over things on Instagram uh, is a little, yeah, it's overwhelming for one and also I feel like it's um, it makes you consume more uh, sometimes I ask myself like oh wow do I really need well not need but like do I really want to need net something or is it just that I've seen it over and over and over again on Instagram and sometimes uh, I've never knit something that I finished and then told myself well I actually did not want this it was just like social media influencing me thankfully that has never happened um, but definitely there's just like a pressure of knitting new things because you see things over and over and you just want to like post cute stuff and just share with others your project and especially now that I've kind of become that feels very weird for me to say <laughs> it's only my fifth video but I've become a little bit of a creator online, I guess, like tiny, 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 obviously, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just like there's a little bit of pressure that I put on myself, I know, um, to have new things, to be able to show acquisitions and to like have new projects to talk about and I mean... It's really human nature to be very enthusiastic about new and shiny things. This is totally normal, but I felt like Instagram was influencing my consumption of yarn. Uh, well, not so much Instagram as YouTube. Really, I've just recently become more active on Instagram. But YouTube definitely podcast, giving me ideas, which can be extremely positive. Um, it can like feed your creativity but at the same time uh, there's a bit of pressure and uh, what I want to come down uh, come to is really uh, consuming there's a lot of consumerism and materialism going on and it's very encouraged to buy new things and to yeah for me really fiber arts are about intentionality like actually knitting things that I will wear that I would love that I will mend when whenever they're broken and to be able to have a wardrobe that is as creative and reflects my personality and also as sustainable as possible and yeah this constant uh, flow of images and new things yeah all of that to say that it doesn't really encourage me to be more intentional in my knitting and in my making and it just can be a little bit um, stressful to always want to be uh, chasing the new trends uh, when knitting in itself uh, in its essence is really about making things slowly stitch by stitch so I think we're on our fourth bullet point, which is yarn that you have had for some time in your stash will be less likely to be used. Um, I think it really comes down to us humans being once again excited by new things. Uh, but seeing yarn over and over in your stash just makes you used to seeing it and it's no longer as enticing. And it just like stagnates a little bit in my stash, the yarns that I haven't used. 
and I'm just like not very excited about them anymore. So <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I just put some of my yarn into boxes and into my closet because um, it just allows me to kind of forget completely about it and then rediscover it whenever I will take these boxes out to constitute a new like season yarn stash, seasonal yarn stash I should say. Um, so yeah, really it's that. Um, it becomes a little bit boring and also uh, your tastes can change quite quickly especially with social media um, we you can absolutely buy a skein and then feel like why why did I actually buy it that has happened to me uh, a few times already I have some yarn that I'm just like not very excited about and I'm like this isn't really my taste anymore and will I ever use it? Well, I don't know. I'm going to try to be get more excited with it, um, with this whole challenge, if I can call it like that. But yeah, that's something that I want to work on because I feel like it's too bad to just let, uh, I need to kind of regain some of the enthusiasm that I had about them. Or I guess I could also either sell them or donate them. I will see what I do with it but yeah it can definitely be a little bit frustrating to have spent money um, and to store things that you don't really like that much anymore next point um, <laughs> is actually a very like simple and straightforward one I don't have enough space <laughs> anymore uh, I have as I was saying so much yarn now and I cannot display it as I would want to display it um, anymore I now I put in I put it all into not all but like aside from this uh, it's all in my closet and it's going to stay in my closet which will allow me to maybe get a bit more enthusiastic about it and uh, <laughs> to rediscover the yarn that I have bought in the past whenever I want to pick some more yarns and a new kind of yarn collection to knit through in the next season but definitely I uh, don't have enough space anymore and <laughs> whenever I will have to move uh, I don't know how I would manage to do that with that many boxes of yarn even though it's not heavy per se um, it definitely takes a lot of space <laughs> it's very like fluffy and big um, so yeah that's something to take into account if you don't live in a big house uh, if you have to share your space with a partner, with your family, there might just not be enough space for you to have a huge stash. And yeah, it's important to keep that in mind. So the next thing I want to say is that hopefully having less option and having to knit from my stash for at least six months hopefully a year or hopefully until I have a decent sized stash and not one that is way too big for my needs <laughs> um, well that it will make me more creative hopefully so I feel like sometimes when you have less of a choice you come up with more ideas um, and more options. I'm used to swapping yarn and patterns because generally the yarn that is recommended is not in my budget. So this is something I've been doing for a while, but just trying to find ways to repurpose uh, scraps of yarn or just maybe designing myself something self-drafting patterns even though like designing patterns isn't necessarily something I would see myself doing right now but just for me uh, it sounds like it could actually make me more creative uh, to find solutions and it's exciting to find ways of making something that you love without actually having to buy things having to spend money uh, just like doing 
this from things that you already own. There's some satisfaction to be found, found in that, I think. Uh, the next point is actually very much linked with that one, is that very simply said, I have everything I need. I do not need to buy any more yarn. I do not need to buy any more knitting tools. I will replace uh, the knitting tools um, if I break any that I actually need for my, for my crafting. But other than that, I have everything I need. And knitting for me is a hobby, so not something that I have to do, although it very is, it very much is beneficial for my life. But yeah, I think that I do have everything I need and to practice gratitude for what you already have um, in your life, in your stash, in this example, um, can be very beneficial. So I want to like practice being grateful for what I have and to not feel like I need to buy and consume more in order to stay creative and enjoy my hobby. Next thing, um, <laughs> simply also like something that is very straight to the point, uh, yarn is expensive. Uh, this is a secret for no one, like you, there are many ways um, you can need on the cheap side. Um, definitely I will make a video in the future about like my tips for knitting uh, on a budget and it is definitely possible but anyway like you anytime you buy yarn it will cost you money that's just obviously a fact um, and I don't buy like the cheapest yarn ever, namely like acrylic and stuff, but still I don't buy the most expensive at all. But still it has cost me a big amount of money over the years. And yeah, especially for me as I live in Switzerland, I tend to order a lot of my yarn because uh, yarn sold in the, uh, the yarn stores here. Uh, can be more expensive. Yarn tends to be quite expensive in Switzerland uh, and yeah there's like a cycle of you order yarn online and you have like free shipping from certain price point or you tell yourself well I might as well just like purchase a few more skeins than what I actually need for my project because like you might as well do that uh, since you're already ordering online. So yeah, it just has become quite out of hand. I feel like some people who might like only buy yarn for a certain project they have in mind might end up spending less money, but that's not um, what I've been doing so far. Uh, so it has cost me quite a big amount of money, uh, which is fine, like it hasn't ever been out of hand, but I think now is the time to just like take a step back and uh, knit through what I already have um, and just enjoy the the process without having always the idea of you know buying more consuming more spending more on this um, this might be a good opportunity for me to save a little bit of money so yeah that is that the last uh, point I want to make here is actually very very central um, to all of the current debates I feel like. Um, ecologically speaking for the planet, consuming yarn, a lot of it is very very much not beneficial. <laughs> um, I feel like a lot of the crafting community is very much about sustainability and uh, like being mindful, creating your own wardrobe, not consuming fast fashion, which are all things to be celebrated and to be happy and interested in. But um, how beneficial is it for the environment to make your own clothes, to um, have a like slow fashion um, perspective, I guess, um, of well, literally making yourself your clothes, which is way slower than just like buying uh, any any kind of uh, 
of clothes made in factories in uh, in countries that don't really regulate uh, their workers' rights and all of that and the environment, um, the impact on the environment. How beneficial is it to craft if you consume so much yarn that you cannot even use at all? Um, I still think it's better to have a bit too much yarn than a bit too much fast fashion to consume a bit too much fast fashion and to really not wear it until the point where it's unwearable anymore and not mendable. So yeah, I feel like sometimes the hoarding almost yarn, I don't think I'm at the point of hoarding yarn, but it's just like to paint your, an image, um, hoarding yarn, which is not being used. Although I try to refrain a little bit from buying fast fashion, which is which can be difficult, honestly, uh, with on a budget and stuff, but like if I, I haven't bought any new jumper since I started knitting because I think, well, I can make them myself, so why would I buy any? Which is great because I'm not encouraging fast fashion in that way. But if I purchase so much on that I cannot knit through it and that I don't can actually like use and wear on the daily, I don't think there's a big, um, a big, uh, a good impact really to <laughs> say things simply uh, so yeah that's really that there's a lot of ethical questions about knitting as well like fibers and how the sheep are treated and all of that which are really important questions that I'm not going to touch on in this video um, but yeah the these um, there's actually a very interesting video from a channel that is called Cristal Elka. This is a French channel, but I would encourage you uh, very much to check out her videos. If you speak French, she has a whole series of just like uh, explaining things. And it's not really like podcasts in the sense that she will, doesn't show uh, what she makes, but she talks a lot about like sustainability in yarns and uh, like superwash. She has a very great episode on superwash yarn that I would encourage you to watch. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for today. I hope that I've uh, communicated my different ideas across well enough for them to be understandable. Again, that's just my own experience, um, my own way of thinking. So yeah, I'm running out of battery again. So thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day or evening.